this week on the Rutledge Perspective, I want to talk about this concept of obligation as opposed to service or in lieu of service or maybe combined with service. And that confusion around this word obligation is real. I asked that question on Monday is if you serve out of a sense of obligation, is it really service? It's a really good question. Is the only way to serve serving with a happy heart, with a glad heart, with a a servant's heart? Is that the only way to serve? And is doing things out of a sense of obligation not service because you feel forced or pressured or somehow without a choice about doing the thing or being at the place? Does that make your actions your engagement any less impactful or any less service oriented. It is something that is really stirring my brain this week because obligation came up for me in one of my sessions. And when I think about some of the things that I do or feel led to do, most of the things as I left corporate and started doing my own thing, the majority of things that I do, I truly feel I'm in my purpose. These are things that I feel compelled to do that they are, my gut says, yes, this is right. I'm living in my genius. And, and that is the majority of things. When I look back over the trajectory of the last five years, though, there were some things that I did out of a sense of obligation. And if I examine those, the question is obligation to whom? Because No one forced me to do them. It just felt like I was supposed to, right? That supposed to thing. I was supposed to do these things. I needed to have a product. I was supposed to show up in a certain way. I was supposed to post a certain way. I was all of these things that I felt obligated to do in order to be what everyone else defined as appropriate or accurate or in my zone or the way I should show up. I felt obligated to do all of these other things. And the challenge with obligation is obligation can lead to resentment. And if you are resentful when you're doing things, are you serving? Because service is also about excellence. It is about showing up with a full heart and giving everything you can and doing what you can with what you have. And if you are resentful because you feel obligated to do it, because it's not because you want to, it's just because somebody said you should, are you really in service? Are you really going to be able to make the kind of impact that you want to make if all you're feeling is this sense of obligation, this sense of you're supposed to do it, you are expected to do it. Expectations are a bear. You're expected to do it. You are somehow not fulfilling your role if you don't. This is a really big thing, I think, in in corporate arenas or even nonprofit or whatever organization that's not yours. It's also in entrepreneurship, but that what comes up from right now is really in those organizations where you're working within an organization. And I think back to looking at my calendar and there was no white space on my calendar at all, none. Every day was back to back. I mean, no time to eat, no time to go to the bathroom, no time to just take a breath. And that sense of obligation of having to be there. Every time somebody needed something, you had to respond. If they needed you to go somewhere, you had to go on the trip. This this sense of you don't have a choice. That's what obligation ties to it is the lack of choice. The lack of autonomy, the lack of agency is tied to that idea of obligation. I am obliged, mighty obliged used to be a nice saying, right? I'm, I'm really pleased to do this for you. But obligation, on the other hand, has a connotation that is not free, that is somehow forced upon or put upon each of us with respect to how we choose to spend our resources, time, energy, money, etc. Obligations feel forced, right? People say all the time, well, I have other obligations. Oh, I can't come because I have other obligations. Make sure you're taking care of your obligations. It's this owing. There's a debt 
associated with obligation. There is a, a connotation that you owe someone or something. And is that, or does that eliminate the ability to serve in that moment? Because is service really service if it's not done with a full heart? with gladness, with a focus on the other person, because service is not about you. Service is about the other person. What does obligation do to our ability to be impactful in the use of our gifts, of spreading and sharing our genius? If we are obligated to do that, are we doing it in the right way? Are we making as big an impact? Are we able to listen actively, understand what the real need is so that we're providing a solution that makes an impact? Because that's what service is. Service is understanding and identifying needs, developing and determining and designing solutions, and then executing upon those solutions so that it makes an impact to the problem that you were trying to solve. That's what service is about. Service to yourself, service to others, service in a grand scheme of things. And yet, feeling obligated to serve is not necessarily all bad, but connecting those two words seems really incongruent at times. Because obligation, at least for me, and I would ask some of you who who have been in situations that are just toxic or you just don't feel like they fit anymore. What does that feel like when someone tells you you're obligated to show up to the meeting or to go to the corporate party or you feel obligated to be on the the program or to do the project? One, because maybe they're paying you and that's your role. That's one thing. But all the other ancillary stuff that goes around, obligated, especially in HR, you're, you're obligated to have the difficult conversation, to call people on the carpet, to make sure that, that words and actions align. You are the keeper of the culture, not the executor of all the culture, right? You are the, the conscience of the organization. There's an obligation to be the conscience of the organization. And that's heavy. That is a heavy burden to bear. And so that sense of heaviness can create resentment because you begin at some point to not do it because you want to, or even because it's the right thing to do. You start doing it because you have no choice. And when we start feeling like we don't have a choice, we start feeling resentment. We start feeling put upon. We start feeling undervalued or devalued completely. And that does serve, in my perspective, to undermine the power of service. Now, don't get me wrong. I do believe that we all have a level of obligation to speak truth to power. We have an obligation to remember that there are such things as facts and that truth absolutely does exist. It does exist. Now, over time, do we find different information? Does the science advance? Do we find things now that may not be truth later, but they are truth in this moment. Maybe they get disproven, right? Like we have proven that the world is round. Maybe at some point we get proof that there really are even more galaxies out there than we thought. And there really is life on these other planets, right? Where at one point we didn't believe that to be the case, or we thought they were just these crazy aliens with, you know, advanced intellect. And who knows if that may be true. But that idea of of obligation to continue to move forward and continue to serve just seems like a really, on the one hand, really very definitely connected, like intrinsically connected and diametrically opposed at the same time. And as I've said before, both can be true, right? It really can be a pain in the butt to feel obligated. It can make you resentful. It can make you just just rebel, all of that stuff. And when we feel obligated to do good work, that can help us move into service in a way where we're focused so heavily and so clearly on impacting outcomes and making a difference, that that obligation to make a difference, that obligation to serve actually magnifies the impact that we can make. 
So my question to you this week, and I really want to hear what you what you think, is, is it imperative that you serve with a happy heart, a free heart, a full heart? Or can a sense of obligation still support a desire to serve? And if the latter is true, that obligation can support a desire to serve, what are some of the tips and tricks that you use to one, identify and be aware of how obligation can drive our own resentment and rebellion, but some tips and tricks you use to remove that, to remove the rebellion, to remove the contrariness. How do you become aware and how do you start to move through that so that the obligation is an obligation to be everything you are, serve every way you can, be the incredible genius that I know you are and that probably people in your village know that you are, the obligation to just be you. How do we sit in that? and lift that up and make that how we lead, how we show up, how we move through this space, as opposed to the obligations that feel like debts, that feel like burdens, that feel like a lack of choice. I'm really interested to hear what you think. This week on The Rutledge Perspective, it's all about the question. So have a fantastic rest of your week. Let me know where you're feeling obligated. Let me know where you're feeling like it's a happy, happy situation to be of service. I look forward to hearing from you and I appreciate your listening and downloading every single time. Every download makes a difference. And I really do listen to and watch and take to heed your comments about things that you want to talk about. I look forward to also seeing you on Fireside on Thursday, 7 p.m. on the Fireside app. Firesidechat.com slash Laurel Rutledge is where you get access. Thanks so much for tuning in this week. I really appreciate it. And I can't wait to hear what you think. Take care. See you next time. Bye-bye. You have been listening to the Rutledge Perspective Podcast. Thank you so much for downloading and for connecting. You can find previous episodes of the podcast on my website at laurelrutledge.com forward slash podcast. You can also find me on social media at Laurel K. Rutledge and or The Rutledge Perspective. And I'd love your perspective on the things we talk about. And if there's a specific topic you want me to cover, just let me know. And please share this podcast with someone in your village who may need this little piece of perspective today. And if you're so inclined, I would really appreciate a five-star rating and review on the platform of your choice. Apple Podcasts and Spotify reviews are particularly helpful. Thank you again for listening. Take care.